thing we, that we now call the paradox experience. And it's really my sort of uh, driving motivation to bring electronics, new, uh, new detection systems to paranormal. Um, one of the first things I built was these unusual lighting systems. Uh, it's basically high frequency pulse light and I can select any of several different colours of light. Most interest to me is blue and ultraviolet light. And as some of you have seen, I have got an unusual photograph that I've taken here at Plastec using this equipment. So if there's anyone with cameras later on that wants to just to snap a few pictures using this type of technology, you can do. Come speak to me afterwards. I'll spend a little bit of time on the um, top corridor upstairs. Well, basically the system, uh, I'll just put it in demo mode and show you basically it's pulsing light. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's pulsing light, but very, very high speed. So if I click into its normal mode, you can't see it flashing the lights now. The idea and the theory is, uh, just like a strobe on the dance floor, when the strobe flashes, it catches you moving there, there, there. With this, it's pulsing so fast, I'm hoping it's going to freeze fast motion, potentially catching a spirit or a ghost. And I have got this one photograph already, so the system does work. But there are several photographs now in existence. There is also another one of these units, and one of the visitors here tonight, he's got a camcorder and camera, and he's using that as well. All I ask is that I'll be popping in and out of the rooms um, using different bits of kit. The procedure will be that just as somebody will say flash before they take a photograph, he will turn the machine on and it will pulse blue and ultraviolet light, and he will either capture a small clip of video or a photograph. Anyone in the room at the time can also make use of that light um, by taking a photograph, but try and make sure you turn the flash off on your camera um, and your camera will absorb some of this light. Obviously the light has got to be pointed in a direction where potentially there's something happening. Um, you might capture it, but you can all make use of it. Um, it can be made use of by a camcorder and a still camera. Um, on this piece of kit I've got obviously the lighting unit, my camcorder, still camera on the side and the interesting bit is the bit at the, the, the back and the side. One of the things that interested me greatly from early on with paranormal investigation was EVP, <coughs> electronic voice phenomena. Generally speaking, practically everyone can record an event on the camcorder or any kind of recorder, play it back later, hours or days later to find something unusual recorded, a noise, a voice or a sound that wasn't heard in the room or the location at that time. And that intrigued me because I recorded something unusual here in the house. And I worked out the electronics of how noises are recorded from microphone onto a recorder, onto tape and then later played back. And I've built a couple of these systems now where there's no tape in this system. It goes from the microphone, it's processed and there's an amplifier on the back. What that will potentially allow is if there is any spirit communication of any kind, anything unusual, you will hear it in real time as it actually happens. We'll hear sounds. Now we had an interesting experience last weekend. It was the first time Rob and I had met. We hadn't met at all. He knew nothing about the technology. He didn't know how I was going. <coughs> he didn't know how it worked. He didn't know what it was potential was. In one particular room in this building, it's fair to say that as Rob started communicating, you were in the middle of the circle, um, the machine started to build up energy and reactions and noises in the form of tones or feedback. Until eventually Rob started hearing the sound as well. I was standing next to it and you could hear it. It's almost certain that there was a conversation going on between Rob and the spirit presence in the room with us and the machine was giving us reactions that was allowing Rob to react to it and get answers to yes yes, no questions. As this went on, I think there were probably about two or three spirits that came away. Yeah. I, I, I asked the questions and also asked for the, the, the tones to change. So it started off with just a continual beep, and then it would maybe give a bit of feedback in you know, a high pitched tone. So then I started to play with, play with the fact of if you're giving me a yes answer, pulse the tone. So we go from B to one, 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 B, one, 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 one. So and Paul was nowhere near the equipment, so and th there's nothing there to make that sound. So as we were going on and we were answering, asking the questions on and on and on, 
we were getting different sounds and we, we, we managed to nail enough. Paul, Paul was saying that he, he, he nearly picked up a voice. Directly through the machine. Directly through the machine. And it comes to the point where the, the tone was that fine that you could just barely hear the tone and it started to crackle and you could, you could if you strain, you could make out some type of, of, of a, a sound, maybe not yes or no, but certainly a sound of, of description. So when we were doing that, and we did it, we were there for about an hour, weren't we? And, we? and we had the machine going constantly for an hour and there was no break. No break in the communication at all. Spirits come and gone. Different spirits did different different tones. Also, when the uh, when the first spirit come back, the same tone we heard from before. So you know, I, I mean, I was really impressed. I'd never worked any equipment before, and it was just confirming really what what I was picking up. So it was quite good for the people sat in the circle who at that point they were breaking themselves. I have to say. <laughs> oh, same Trisha went out the door. Yeah, she actually legged it out the door. Yeah. <laughs> but it's what I've been aiming for. Somebody asked me the question before is. Do I build technology to prove or disprove? I build technology for, for a purpose, and the purpose is to explore more about the spirit world. And this has been like a long road. There's been two or three of these that didn't actually work and produce anything. But there is technology that I've devised now that is actually working. It doesn't work every time. Just like Rob might say, he can't pick something up in every single room. It's not something that you can make happen. And I can't guarantee tonight that this is going to produce something but it does on occasion, we do get something through. So if, if we get some unusual tones or sounds, uh, that'd be great, we're looking forward to it, but there's never any guarantee with it. Um, so what I'll do is I will pop in and out because there's three different groups, um, just like <coughs> Rob will pop in and out. There is also another uh, system, just a box over there, similar to this. If anyone wants to volunteer to take charge of that for a couple of hours, just leave it switched on and see if anything happens. You're welcome to take to take that upstairs and listen to it, see if you get any reactions. Any brave volunteers? <laughs> okay, I'll show you how to use it. It's fairly easy to use. I'm on that. But that's part of what we're calling the paradox experience: is to put more <coughs> technology into paranormal investigation, more relevant technology. Um, I've had photographs using this lighting system. We've had reactions of audio through this, so things are starting to work. But especially is um, to bring it to use by, by the people like yourself uh, they have got no experience about this before um, it, there's no magic or secret to it it works or it doesn't work and sometimes it works because it's great and especially if other people get results as well so we'll see how things progress I certainly good for me because a lot of people would, would consider that um, this type of equipment I'd be quite nervous about because if someone does go near it then, then it will go off, and it really will go off. It's not, it's not like a, a a box with a remote that we've got in our pocket doing this, you know, to make it go. It pulls like, oh, it go like that. But um, no, I'm I'm really impressed with the equipment. Well, as I said to Rob before as well, the reaction last weekend, and it's not the first time I've had, I've had some very good results from it in the past. Um, but I, I couldn't actually make it make those noises that were coming through that, that last weekend. If I if I wanted to, I couldn't get it to make those. And neither noises. could I. I was just asking it for it to happen, and it was just happening. So I would, because it was the first time I, I was getting quite excited as well. The fact that I'm asking something to do, and for for the first time in four years, people can actually experience what I'm experiencing through the equipment rather than, than through me. Because I can sit here, I can tell you that there's 50 dead people in here. You don't have to believe me. I don't care. I'm not, I don't mean that to be rude, I, I'm just saying that because I do see and you don't, it doesn't mean that it's not there. And I've had loads of, I had eight, I've had eight sceptical people come with me that work for an aerospace company, all scientists, and by the, by the end of the investigation they were all believers. But it's, it's nice to have something Which to give good. Um, positive results. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> that's what I'm aiming for, is, is to bring, or to make equipment that actually gives results from the actions that everyone can hear and say, so as they know that there's something going on around. The only other thing is, on the top landing, I will have some um, lasers set up. They're not harmful, <coughs> but it just, it's another form of um, photography or um, video. Um, any, again, anyone who's interested, if you've got a camcorder or a camera and wants to just to spend 10 15 minutes up there, you'll see something different in light forms, something that might give reactions or be able to allow us to see something. And that, again, that has worked in the past for me. 
So that's another thing that I like to spend a little bit of time on. <coughs> and this place is fabulous, by the way, once you get started. Mm -hmm. But uh, even if you've got no equipment, you can just sit in and you'll experience something of some form. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, we'll get started. Should we get started then? Yeah. Everyone yeah. ready to go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what colour are we doing?